Okay, so what's up, everyone? Why, why do people that make YouTube videos always start out like that? What's up? I can think of myself as a pastor going to the pulpit, looking out at the congregation and saying, Hey, what's up, folks? Problem is, they'd probably tell me. I've been doing some thinking about the current time that we live in and the current events uh, that are going on around us uh, with a war in uh, the Ukraine. And I've been thinking about the problem of evil and uh, God. And um, I think there's some traditional thinking in Christianity that, in fact, um, uh, God meticulously uh, controls everything in the world according to his uh, providence and divine foreknowledge. And um, while that might be true, I notice that there is a number of people uh, who are now taking a step back from Calvinism to take a look at Molinism, which is uh, a, a kind of an interesting, a, a, an interesting step. Uh, Molinism has uh, libertarian free will and uh, suggests that men have libertarian free will to uh, come to salvation or not but it doesn't carry with it some of the other ideas of Arminianism. One of the things that Christian apologists are uh, thinking about is how Molinism uh, better explains the problem of evil. Well, there is evil in the world and we're seeing it unfold on our TV sets, on our YouTube videos. Um, and that problem I think is more a spiritual warfare problem uh, than anything else. Now, I've been thinking about spiritual warfare for a long time, uh, not all of my life. I, there's some people that think that's all I think about. No, but <clears throat> I came across this uh, in a book by Gregory Boyd called God at War. Uh, the Bible and Spiritual Conflict. <clears throat> Boyd is a Presbyterian theologian uh, who has uh, written a very um, uh, outstanding book about the Bible and spiritual conflict in the world that we live. And he says, <clears throat> and I have this on the screen for you, first, the apologetic need for a warfare perspective on suffering and evil will not be seen if there's insufficient appreciation for the radicality of evil in our world and the radical nature of the problem this poses for the classical philosophical understanding of divine sovereignty as meticulous uh, control. And second, he says, this thesis requires a willingness to think about the power of God, the reality of evil, the influence of Satan in some rather untraditional ways. Uh, this point is disturbing to many more traditionally minded uh, believers. And thirdly, the warfare thesis requires as a central component, a belief in angels, Satan, demons as real autonomous free agents as well as a belief that the activity of these beings intersects with human affairs for better or for worse. Many modern people including Christian theists find this belief inherently implausible. But here's the thing, the Bible and this is the case that that Greg Boyd uh, lays out in his book, God at War, is that the Bible is on a warfare footing. That uh, there is a dominion of darkness populated uh, by um, agents, 
like demons, like angels, like uh, uh, we could name so many things, uh, that have uh, libertarian free will. And um, as we, you know, when when we're looking, when we're looking at the uh, uh, kind of things that we're seeing on our on our YouTube screens and our TV and in the news, uh, Ukrainians being being murdered, uh, war crimes going on right before our very eyes. Um, and we have a view of God as having meticulous control over every single detail. Um, we're really awarding God a lot of responsibility for evil. And that doesn't really seem to be right. In fact, God is fundamentally opposed to evil. The Western Church, Greg uh, Boyd goes on to say, the Western Church and the whole Western culture is now embarking on a postmodern age in which most of the features of the classical philosophical theistic worldview and certainly fundamental features of the rationalistic enlightenment worldview are being jettisoned. And while this new age uh, presents some unique problems for the church to address, it also presents many unique positive opportunities if the church is willing to seize on them. But the church has to understand that we are locked into a spiritual warfare, a cosmic warfare that um, started before even uh, God said, let there be light. It continued through uh, the garden and the all of human history is moving from the garden to the city, the new Jerusalem in the last chapter of the book of Revelation. And that struggle comes with opposition, with defeat, with discouragement, and with perseverance. I want you to think a little bit today about this issue of spiritual warfare and how you will grapple with the coming intense spiritual warfare that we will be going through. Well, thank you very much for watching and uh, God bless you.